Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Allie's Amazing Scents. If you're new here, my name is Allison, your independent Scentsy consultant, and I have today with me Miss Maya. Hello. She's going to join us in the beginning of the video. Um, I have a whole lot of empties to get through that we're going to talk about today. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to briefly talk about two books that I finished um, since my last empties, and that is The Art of Racing in the Rain and the Hunger Games prequel, which is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So that'll be at the end of the video. Um, but we have a lot of empties to cover, so let's get started here. Maya wanted to pop in um, here at the beginning and talk about a couple of her favorite scents that we warmed. So the first one is Give Me Candy. And it... Really gives me like this give me candy vibe. It also goes really good with mint stuff and other kind of sweet stuff. Yeah, Maya loves this scent. This is like a favorite in our and house. Then next is Frightfully Delightful. Fright Frightfully Delightful. It is really Bully, but also like really sweet and sugary. It goes good with a bunch of um, other sweets too. And it also really good goes good with Gimme Kid. Yes, these two do go good together. They smell um, like the same. They kind of do, but Frightfully Delightful is more of a fall scent. Like you, you said, kind of folly. Um, it has pumpkin and peach in it. And... Is it caramel or butterscotch? Butterscotch. I don't know. I actually warmed this on a day. Um, this is the first month I have participated in Patricia Gates' melting challenge. And so there was a day that warm a caramel scent or like a gooey scent. And so that's when we did this. And that was a really good one. Um, this would also be a good one for the day for Say Goodbye to Fall. Favorite fall scent. This is my favorite fall scent. Loving it. So this is um, in my club and Gimme Candy will be going back in my club. So yeah, those were Maya's top picks this time. So thanks, Maya. We'll see you next time. Okay, so now, I apologize. I know this is not the greatest lighting in here. Um, I'm in my office. There's no school today, so this is kind of like a quiet spot. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. I have this organized a little bit more than usual. We're going to start with a few non sensey items. Then we're going to do sensey non-wax items and then the bulk of it is wax. So for my non scentsy items, I have um, three things here. The first one is Bath and Body Works Foaming Hand Soap in Wicked Vanilla Woods. I love this scent. Um, I got like seven of these and I have a couple left. So this is um, vanilla, amber wood, and pink pepper. To me, this scent reminds me a lot of Ghostly Greetings, and I think it's the pink pepper in it. But it's funny because Brandy from Brandy's um, Bars and Bricks, she doesn't really like this scent, and she said it reminds her of dashing, which she doesn't really like dashing. So it's just funny how, you know, we both get totally different scent experiences from the same product. I think she used hers in a wallflower. Um, this is a new scent this season, so it's only available in wallflower and soap. But hopefully they bring it out more products next season, next fall, winter, because it, it was really good. Um, from Lush, I got a bar soap in Snow Fairy. So this is just like a, um, kind of a cotton candy sweet type scent. That's really good. I would repurchase that. And then I'm not sure why I put this in here, but I'll go ahead and talk about it. It's not a fragrance scent. This is a um, makeup setting spray. Spray on your face after you put your makeup on to set it. I got this on clearance in Walmart. Uh, Wet n Wild had a LTO line of Sesame Street stuff, and so I like this. It was it was good. Um, I like Wet n Wild setting sprays. Okay, so now let's move on to Scentsy um, with the non wax items. Okay, so first thing I have is a counter clean in vanilla mint. Um, this is really nice in counter clean, um, and 
the scent is not in wax anymore in our catalog, only in cleaning, but it is like vanilla, mint, and then a frosted citrus note, which kind of differentiates it from a lot of other mint scents. And it's really, really good. Um, I actually used this up a while ago and I had some counter clean in here in lemon verbena, which I didn't like really. I mean, it was all purpose cleaner. But as far as vanilla mint, it's good. I would repurchase it. I would like to try it in bathroom. I think it'd be really good in the bathroom spray. We'll see if it carries over into next season because I have a feeling it might not. It was last. It was around last fall, winter, last spring, summer, and then this fall, winter. Um, another seasonal um, counter clean that I got through is new to the catalog this season. This is Scarlet Sunflower. We still have this in wax, but this is the first season that it's been in cleaning. And this is a really, really good scent. Um, I really like it in cleaning. I would repurchase it again in cleaning, but I am trying to get through some, some counter cleans that I have on hand. Um, I don't know if this will come back in spring, summer. Sometimes they'll keep scents in like cleaning or laundry that aren't seasonal. But to me, this is definitely a fall scent. So this is... Apple, Juicy Apple, Red Cranberry, and Scarlet Sunflower. Really, really good. Okay, got through uh, Scentsy Fresh and Snow Kiss Cranberry. So Scentsy Fresh is, um, you can spray it on fabrics to freshen them, like couches, curtains. You can even spray it in your closet, whatever. But it's good for stuff that you can't clean super easily, like couches. Um, this was an LTO, I think, last year. And it smells like so, so, uh -huh, Snow Kiss Cranberry, which is a really pretty, almost body care type cranberry scent. Um, I actually picked up two of these at that time, and I still have a full one that I need to get through this winter. It takes me a long time to get through Scentsy Fresh. So um, it was really good. Um, if I didn't have any more, I probably would be interested in purchasing one more, but I still have an unopened one, so I'm fine with that. But yeah, that's not available anymore anyway. Um, I think this is no longer available either. Pretty sure this sold out. This is Arctic Kiss. This was in our holiday collection, which will be leaving us the end of this month. But like I said, I think this is gone anyway. The laundry, you got two small um, washer with tubs and then a laundry liquid in Arctic Kiss. And this was a big hit. I could see this coming back next season. I mean, next fall, winter in laundry. To me, um, I've had mixed performance with it. Um, overall, I don't get the best performance. I think um, Fluffy Fleece is a better performer in laundry, but this is a really nice scent. It's got really nice scent appeal in laundry too. This is a fresh scent with Arctic Mint, Fresh Air, Vanilla Clouds. And I thought there was a melon note in here. That's weird. I swear I thought there was a melon note. Maybe when it came out in the scent of the month and it listed the top mint and base notes, maybe that's where I got that from. But anyway, that was nice. Okay. So for scent circles, I used up a frosted vanilla. Uh, that was good. It lasted a long time in my vehicle. Dashing. This was really nice. This is a new scent this season. I don't think I'm going to sit here and read all the scent notes because we're going to be here a long time. But this is a really popular one this season. Um, I don't get great performance out of it, and I didn't in the scent circle. It was okay for a couple days, and then I couldn't smell it anymore. Um, but this is just like a cozy, I think it's in the woods category, but it's a cozy, fresh scent. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to read the scent notes, but I think I will look this one up here, dashing. Vanilla, creamy mahogany, and fresh night skies. Um, I think we'll see this again. If it doesn't stick around for spring, summer, I think we'll see it next season because it was so popular. Okay. Next, um, oh, that's just the pack for dashing. And then currently in my vehicle, I have Velvet Moon going with a Velvet Moon pod, and I'm really enjoying that. This is a really pretty floral. Um, this is the second year in a row that it's been in the floral category in winter. And I'm a little worried that it won't return. And so this is going to go back in my club at the end of this season. 
One of the notes in it is foggy mist, which sounds weird, but it does totally give you like a foggy mist type vibe. So, um, and this is, this is a pretty good performer too. Okay, I have some pods here. Frosted vanilla pod that was in my vehicle with the frosted vanilla um, scent circle. That's a really good performer. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like a winter version of Bonfire Beach. Um, so I went through Maddie's Scentsy drawer and she had a bunch of stuff that was like greasy. And so I just took it and used it. She had some pods in there that she doesn't have a mini fan diffuser in her room anymore. And so I just took her pods. Um, she had some Go-Go Mango and those were about out of scent. These are, I got her these when the mini fan diffuser came out. So a few years ago before I was a consultant, probably going on four years now. Um, and I had replaced those in my bedroom with, um, I had in there aloe water and cucumber. That's a great fresh green scent and it's a great performer. I would purchase that one again. Um, always a great performer, jammy time. I love this. I have this in my Scentsy Go right now and, um, it's just, it's really great. It's cozy. It's got, um, I'm drawing a blank on the notes here, but it's a cozy, fresh bedroom scent. And I had replaced that with, um, before that I had Clean Breeze in there. Clean Breeze, it's such a good classic laundry scent. Um, it was called Scentsy Clean and Laundry, and they took it out this season. And I'm really sad, and I, I really hope they bring it back, because it's just like a staple laundry scent. And in my opinion, way better than Clothesline. And it's a strong one too. But luckily we still have it in most of the other products. Just not laundry. Um, Maddie had an empty jammy time. And got some wax that um, got on there. Oh, here's the aloe water and cucumber. And look at that. Some, some kind of red wax leaked on there. And oh, in here I have pods from the summer collection. Tangerine and sugar cane. Those were okay. It was kind of just a standard like orange scent so I wouldn't repurchase that again um, and then the other pod from my pod pack of Velvet Moon and oh, I just love this I've just been craving like cozy comforting scents lately and that's one of them and then from the frosted vanilla I think um, oh I had this in ocean air and coconut water this was also from the summer collection and I had this in my hallway in my wall fan diffuser. I don't know. It was okay. It was a nice clean scent, but it was pretty weak in the pods. So not a repurchase for me. Okay. So now I actually kind of have this broken down by zones in my house for once. <laughs> and, um, you guys can let me know if you like this format better. It's actually, I usually don't have really any kind of format, but, um, we'll talk about the open concept. So open concept, I usually do two bars at a time. Um, whether it's the same bar or, yeah, I usually do alternating warmers and, uh, if I'm going to do different scents, which is usually what I do. So one day I wanted, oh, Maddie had a really juicy bayberry and currant. So this was in the sense of the season collection. I think it was last year and everyone was talking about what a nice fresh scent it was so I got it and I didn't really like it it reminds me it's like too much like pine tree with like a weird clean note to it I'm not a big pine or tree scent fan anyway but I did this in my open concept in alternating warmers with woodland suede because there is a sweetness to the Bayberry and Current. I think it's the Current. And Woodland Suede has a sweet note in it too. This was a Bring Back My Bar not too long ago. I think January of last year. And um, they actually played really well together. So I liked it. I liked Bayberry and Current a lot better with Woodland Suede. That was my last bar of Woodland Suede. Um, but that's okay. Okay. Um... So, like I said, this is the first month that I have participated in Patricia Gates' um, monthly melting challenge, or I'm not sure what it's called, but um, basically every month she has a list that she'll take su suggestions from people and make a list of, like, a scent to warm every day, scent prompts. 
and it's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. Um, and it's not, I mean, it's meant to be, you know, something that's enjoyed. So to me, I don't take it too seriously. Um, if, and I don't change out my wax every day. So I'll look ahead a couple days. Like if I know I'm going to have my wax in for two or three days, I'll look ahead what's coming up in the next few days. That sounds like something I would want to melt. And Sometimes I played a little fast and loose with the guidelines, but that's okay. So the first day I did it, I actually played it a little bit fast and loose. And that was a date that they, um, it said um, National Ambrosia Day, like ambrosia salad, warm a scent with an ingredient from ambrosia. So I looked that up. We did have a scentsy scent called ambrosia one time, which I didn't really like. But ambrosia salad is like canned fruit, like canned pineapple, cherries, mandarin oranges, stuff like that with a marshmallow fluff. So I took my half a bar that I had left of my beloved toasted marshmallow and I looked for a fruity scent that I thought would go with it. And this is not a scent in um, Ambrosia Salad, but I chose Angel Experiment 624. Um, this has goji berry in it. And this was such a good combo. And then I had a couple like straggling, um, Warm, outline warmers that I just threw in some vanilla bean buttercream because you can't go wrong with that. But this was such a good combination. Um, I will do this combo again. I really, I really love an, um, toasted marshmallow. A Angel, I like it, but there's something in there that reminds me a little bit of like cough syrup. And I get that a lot of times with like Scentsy's raspberry scents. And so I think it's something with the goji berry just reads a little bit medicinal to me. So when I mixed it with a toasted marshmallow, oh my gosh, it was, it was so good. So good. So I, like I said, I have a couple more bars of this and that's probably what I'll end up doing with them. The only problem is I only get a few bars of toasted marshmallow a year, but so good. So that was like a great way to start out the, um, the melting challenge. Okay. Um, another thing from the melting challenge, which wasn't my favorite combo. Wait, 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 no. Where is that one? That's this one. It was a day where you were supposed to warm um, a red and green scent, like mixed together in the same warmer is how I interpreted it. it interpreted it. And so I did a new scent this um, season of Red Current Wreath which I don't really like. I had a full bar of it because I didn't really like it on cold and I don't really like it warm. And I mixed that with eucalyptus wreath, which I do like. Um, this is a really nice eucalyptus scent. And I'm like, well, they're both wreath. They both say wreath in the name. I'll just mix them together. Um, I think that they did mix well together if you like red currant wreath, which I don't. Um, so I actually left them in for a full day. The second day after I turned on my warmers, it smelled kind of funky. And so I just was like, I'm going to change it out now. Um, but that was the only combo that I didn't really like out of the, um, melting challenge. Uh, today, this is not part of the melting challenge, but it's December 22nd when I filmed this a couple days before Christmas or Christmas Eve. And so, um, I wanted to do like a tree scent. Um, I'm not big on tree scents. I had one bar left of my favorite tree scent, which is pretty in plaid. And this was pretty icky in plaid. Um, it was really not scent appeal wise, but like, look how gooey that is. These bars have always gotten gooey on me. They're pretty in plaid, but it was a green bar with a red um, clamshell. And this actually is not a flat bottom, but it was a scent of the month. A lot of people didn't like it, but it did make it to catalog. Maybe because they needed to get rid of it. I like it. It's like got a perfume note to it. Um, along with the tree scent. And it's a boomer. So, um, like I said, this is my favorite tree scent. But I'm not super picky about tree scents. And so, I'll find another one for the couple days next year that I might want to warm one. Um, and then I did this in my um, living room where my Christmas tree is. And then in my kitchen area, dining room area, I had like half a bar or a partial bar of cranberry and cardamom. This is a new scent this season. Uh, this is nice. Well, it's okay. I have a friend that likes cranberry a lot and she really likes this. But 
Um, it's just okay. It's not my favorite cranberry. It's dead. it's no snow crisp cranberry. <laughs> and I would not repurchase that one again. Um, oh, so I was just saying I usually do two bars in my open concept, but there was one occasion where I did one bar because of what it was. I did one bar of just one bite from the Villains collection because this is a cinnamon apple molasses scent and I am somewhat averse to cinnamon and so I knew that I could probably get by with less because I would pick up on it more. And this was actually really good. Yes, this is a cinnamon apple that I can get behind. Um, and it's the molasses that really makes it special. I would love to see Scentsy come out with something else with molasses in it. Even like a molasses cookie bar, that would be so, so good. And it would be great for mixing. So Scentsy, hint, hint, molasses. We, we would, well, I don't know about we, but I would love to see a molasses bar. Um, but this was really nice. I did throw it in my club temporarily, which really shocked me, but I'm gonna take it out just because of um, costs and stuff. But I think we'll probably see this again. Um, this was the second time, or third time or so that it has been back. So um, yeah, it's one of those don't knock it till you try it kind of things. I would have never tried it till I smelled it warming in my sister-in-law's house. And I was like, dang, that's good. Yeah. Um, so from the Willy Wonka collection, um, I did in my open concept Everlasting Gobstopper. And I did this with vanilla bean buttercream and alternating warmers. And this was so, so good. Oh, yes. It was like um, orange soda float. Like if you did ice cream with orange soda, that's what it was like with the vanilla bean buttercream. But this on its own is just a bright, fizzy, I do get a fizzy note in here, um, orange soda. Yes, I love it. Um, I threw it in my club. I don't know if it'll stay there. It's not the because it's not the most unique scent ever, but right now we don't really have anything like this. I did really enjoy it and it was a good performer. So possible I'll get some more of that. Um, I did really like that. I think you have to get it in club to get it in individually, I think. Um, otherwise you have to get the whole Willy Wonka set. Okay, also in my open concept, um, I did in my living room area, I did the Wish Bar Magic in Every Wish with um, dining room kitchen. I did lemon coconut chiffon. So I had two like lemon citrus scents. That was after my husband cooked um, shrimp scampi <laughs> with a lot of garlic. And so I had to put something fresh in and this did the trick. Um, of course, I love lemon coconut chiffon best lemon scent ever in my opinion it's technically a bakery but it's still like really fresh and this is in my club and it will probably always be in my club in fact i think it's like one of two bars that i have in both of my clubs um but wish this is my first time trying the wish bar and it was good it was a good performer um it was a pretty solid performer um, especially like I felt like it lasted a little bit longer than some citruses, but it was a boomer when it was going, but I would not purchase it again. Um, it's a lemon scent. It's really nice, but, um, with it being a licensed item, it's 50 cents more. And I really love, um, squeeze a day. So I don't think it's different enough for me to purchase this over squeeze the day. I would just purchase squeeze a day, but it was fun. And, um, we enjoyed it. Okay, so there was a melting challenge prompt to warm your favorite winter scent. And I thought about it, I'm like, I don't really know what my favorite winter scent is, but it's probably like a fresh scent. So I started looking through my collection and I found a couple I really liked. And one of them that I, so I, I warmed two different bars together, but warm, one of them I really enjoyed was um, it's now called Polar Bear Hugs, but this was an older bar um, when it was called Eskimo Kiss. Flat bottom Eskimo Kiss. Uh, you can see I got this from Goodwill. It was a full bar. I did a, a video when I had the Goodwill haul and love this. Let me read you guys the scent notes because this is just one of those scents you have to try. It's hard to explain. It's pretty complex with the different scent notes. 
um, and it's been around a really long time. So Polar Dark Hug, Blackberry Jam, Caramelized Brown Sugar, Vanilla, and Amber. Dang, this is such a good scent. Now I will say with this bar being an older bar and I don't know how it was stored um, prior to me receiving it, it was kind of sticky when I took it out of my warmers. Um, I like to do the warm up or the cool down method where the wax is just a little bit soft and then just scoop it out with my finger. And it didn't like leave anything in my dish, but it kind of peeled off like it was sticky, um, which is not normal. So I think it was just, you know, it being old and like I said, I don't know how it was stored, but it didn't affect their performance. This was still a solid performer. And I warmed it in alternating warmers with frosted vanilla. I was a little worried frosted vanilla would overtake this because frosted vanilla is a boomer, but it didn't. And they actually played really well together. So that's a combination that I would do again. I think this might be the last one for my open concept. And this, um, there was a prompt, a uh, plum day, warm a scent that has plum in it. Well, I love me some plum and I have lots of plum. I have a little section in my um, stash that is plum um, in my purple area. So I went and looked through my plums and my dog's opening the door here. Um, I found a couple plums that I did in alternating warmers, sweet plum pastry and um, Maleficent Mistress of Evil. So sweet plum pastry, this is, a cult classic has a huge following um has got a little bit of a run for its money um in terms of popularity this season with rum pum plum to me i much prefer sweet plum pastry i didn't really like rum pum plum it does have like a spice note in it i guess that i i don't like but i love sweet plum pastry i think it also has co coconut in it and like a juicy plum kind of boiling um, over, not boiling, but you know, seeping out of the edges of your pie when you're cooking it. That's what I picture. Really, really good, great performer, powerhouse in my club. And then we have um, Mistress of Evil, Maleficent. I really like this. This is my favorite from the Villains collection. And it was in my club for a hot minute. I took it out. It didn't come back um, recently when Sensi re-released the Villains collection. And someone had made a comment that they were speculating maybe it's because of how bad this bar sweats. This bar is another like notorious sweater, but dang, it is good. Oh, I love that plum scent. Oh, it is so good. Mm. And those two play together so well. So I would warm both of those again on their own and together. That might have been my last Maleficent bar. I'm trying to not just hoard things and not use them because then you don't enjoy them. Okay, so let's move on to my downstairs, my office. Um, I have my office here and then I recently got, I'm in the process of getting my um, library area, my bookshelves set back up um, in the quote family room down here, which is still awry after a flood that we had last year on Christmas Eve and I got my books back up and so I got my warmers on my bookshelves that was like the first thing I did of course so now I've been warming um, some scents in here that kind of coordinate with scents in there and it's been really fun so I'm like did I do anything in the um, library with this I don't remember but um, honeymoon hideaway I did this in my office and this is such a beautiful scent. Again, I got this at Goodwill. This was 99 cents because it was missing two cubes. It's a white wax. Gosh, this is so beautiful on scent appeal. And when I first put it in, I was like kicking myself like, why did I take this out of my club? I love it. It's so good. A lot of people say they can't smell it, but I can smell it. It's not powerful, but it is so good. But then it lost what volume it had and it puttered along at a very low intensity for, I actually left this in for a full week because I wanted to get, I wanted to savor like every second of this smell. But I kind of, 
after the end of the week or really after a couple days, I realized why I took it out of my club. I don't feel so bad now um, because it's, it's not a boomer. It doesn't, it's not a super long lasting scent, but it's so, so, so beautiful. So I would purchase this again. <laughs> I have one more bar in my stash. And then where did I do this? Oh, I did do this in my office. This is Kahiko Hula. So flat bottom, this is an older bar. And actually this came back, I don't know where I got this one, but this came back a couple years ago and bring back my bar. Ooh, I can kind of see a poor date. Eh, I don't, I can't read it. Um, and the, it's not a strong scent and this will never be a strong scent. This has been sitting for a while and yeah, it's just never going to be a strong scent, but it's a really fun fruity scent. So I did really enjoy this. I would not do it in an open concept, but a small to medium size room. It was a fun fruity scent, you know, middle winter. I kind of went through a little phase here where I was wanting fresh, like tropicals fruity scents. So I did this in here. And then in my library, I did beach. This is a boomer. Um, this was another goodwill bar, but this was in the last bring back my bar. Whew, this is a strong one. Um, with the papaya, the papaya in here is very strong, which I think a lot of people don't like. Um, but I really like it. And this wax is like a cream color. So it's like a beach with the sand and the water, the colors, which is fun. But yeah, this is such a great performer. Um, I did put it back in my club and I'm glad that I did because yeah, great performer. I, my favorite time to warm this is like the hottest part of the year, like end of July is when I really love to warm this. But now that it's in my club, I, I can warm it in the middle of winter if I want to. Um, okay. So the other scent that I did in my library is Oh Snapdragon and I don't remember Oh, I know what I had going with that. Okay, this was a catalog item. I think it was around for two seasons. It didn't, I don't think it came back last spring, summer. It's okay. I think it has pineapple in it or apples. I think it's pineapple. And I think I got this in a pineapple themed whiff box. It's okay. It's a fruity floral. Um, but in my um, office I had and currently still going uh, mini mouse uh, or what is this love and kisses mini and this is day five and I should have probably changed my wax two days ago but again I wanted to savor like every moment of this scent because I'm feeling like I might have to take this out of my club I don't know this was in the catalog as the original mini mouse scent and this was when I was a customer but I didn't know about Cincy Club or anything. So I really liked it. And when it left, I, I missed it. And now it came back to bring back my bar, I think last round. So I added it to my club and I really love it, but I don't think that it's super unique. This is a peaches and cream scent and Scentsy does a lot of peaches. And I actually smelled this on cold next to a discontinued Scentsy peach scent. I forget the name. It's basic peach scent. And they're pretty similar. So I really love this, but I don't know if I'm going to keep it in my club. It's not a powerhouse. It does have pretty good longevity. Um, I would call it a medium performer, but it's a peach scent, peaches and cream, you know? Um, so that's kind of on the chopping block right now, but I do love that clamshell. Okay, this was a dud. In my office, I did a swirling bar of swirling snowflakes. I put this in on a Friday, I think, or maybe Thursday, and then I took it out the next Monday. I I didn't want to waste my time with this because it smelled to me very chemically, chemically. Um, and this was in the, yeah, uh-uh. This was in the um, holiday collection. I think it was last year. And I had it in a travel twist and I liked that. And I think I'd worn this in my room back then and I liked it too. So I don't know if it's just because it sat that it took on that, that um, chemical smell. But 
there's no reason for me to be sitting and smelling something that I don't enjoy like that. So I would not repurchase that. I do feel like it changed over time. Let me know if you guys have had that experience. Okay. Um, let's talk bathroom. My bathroom upstairs. Well, no, let's talk bedroom. Okay. Um, actually, this is basement. This went in my laundry room. This, and I also did it in the girls' bedroom. Um, it was a mixture of Beach Daisy and Candy Apple, both former bricks. Candy Apple is a current um, holiday brick, which I think is leaving at the end of this month. And then Candy Apple was in the spring-summer bricks most recently, but it's been around before that in bar form. Um, so this was a suggestion that I heard Patricia Gates talk about for Candy Apple. A lot of people aren't crazy about Candy Apple, myself included. So she talked about maybe you should mix it with Beach Daisy, which I think might have a green apple scent in it. And I did. Um, and I knew, see, my problem with Beach Daisy is I can't really smell it. So I knew that was going to be a concern. So I did like two parts Beach Daisy to one part Candy Apple. I did it in my girls' room. I did it in my laundry room. And the same thing both times. I couldn't, I couldn't smell the Beach Daisy, even though there was more of that than the uh, candy apple. Candy apple just took over. So I, I've tried Beach Daisy multiple times in multiple areas and I just, I can't get it to perform, which is sad because it's a really pretty scent, but it is what it is. Um, okay. In my bedroom, we're getting down here, guys. Um, I finished up a brick of Forever Flannel, which is, um, it was in this holiday brick collection it's sold out but you can put it in your club still so so good so it's great on its own but I mixed it with a couple bars here that I wanted to talk about so the first one I mixed it with is coconut cotton um, and that's because I kept hearing people say that it reminded them of coconut cotton or it reminded them of a co cotton scent and they went really well together this scent I don't know I've had this in my club since I started my club which was like 2020, I think, maybe, yeah, probably 2020. And it's really pretty, but it's kind of a light scent. So this has kind of been on the chopping block for a while, and I may have to cut it for my club because I'm going to have to make some cuts with all the new stuff coming out and the season change and stuff. Probably might be on the on the chopping block. It mixes really good with Forever Flannel, but I think I could probably mix a different coconut scent with that, like Mahalo Coconut or something, and that would be really pretty. But that was a good mixture. And then the other scent that I mix it with, which I am like in love with this combination right now, is Forever Flannel and Fresh Ice, the N NHL scent. Oh my gosh, this is such a good, good combo. Um... Yeah, this is like a fresh mint with a sandalwood in it. So kind of like a masculine scent. Um, really, really good on its own. Really great performer. But it goes excellent with Forever Flannel. And it does not overtake Forever Flannel. I do them in the same warmer. Um, about the same proportions. And... Surprisingly, it, Forever Flannel can still hold its own with this. So, yeah, I have this back in my club. I'm going to keep it in my club for a while at least. And if nothing else, to mix it with Forever Flannel. If you have both of these, I highly, highly, highly recommend you try it. It's so good. Um, a lot of people have not got the best performance with Forever Flannel. So, I don't know. I, For me, it kind of depends on where I warm it. But my bedroom, I have really good... Um, luck with it so probably stick to my bedroom I'm working I just opened my second brick of it <laughs> and I I have I had purchased five bricks total I purchased one and then I purchased four more so I have enough to last me a while but I might still put it in my club just I think my mom would like it okay other bedroom scents here I did a bar of cashmere pear this is a really nice scent. Um, it's cashmere it's pear. It's like a perfumey bedroom scent. Really, really like that one. I think it might be in clearance. It wasn't clearance recently. 
Um, I love this scent this time of year in the bedroom. This is lavender and white balsam. I know I was just saying I'm not a big tree fan, but holy cow, the, this combination is on point. Oh, it is so good. And it really just reminds me of like the really cold, crisp winter days with that relaxing lavender note on top of it so good lavender and white balsam if you guys ever get a chance to pick this up I highly recommend it that will always be in my club I believe <laughs> um okay combination of my bedroom that I have going now that I'm not crazy about mint to be merry which I love on its own okay this is the November scent of the month and in my opinion this is the best scent of the month that we had this whole year I really love it it's um, mint with a sugar cookie note and I think maybe a butter, does it have buttercream frosting? It's definitely sugar cookie and mint and people are loving this. And so I think there's a decent chance that we might see this in the catalog and I, I hope so. I love this. Uh, I said I wasn't going to put it in my club, but I think I am, but I mixed it in the same warmer one cube to one cube with mocha doodle and I did not like that. Another Goodwill bar. Um, I have mixed this twice now. Once with toasted marshmallow, which was a waste of toasted marshmallow. And then I mixed it with this. This was better. But still, I didn't like it. I don't know. I've never warmed a new bar of this, so maybe I should try that. But there's just something weird, very artificial, kind of plasticky smelling about this. And I'm just, I'm not a fan. So, okay. Um, last section we have to talk about is bathroom, which is some bars and then a bunch of testers. And, and then if you guys want to stick around for a brief book review, we'll have that too. So in my bathroom, I did, uh, Maddie had two cubes left in this clamshell of Bayberry and Current. Like I said, yeah, it's okay. Um, she had two cubes left of Velvet Moon, and this is like a really light powdery blue color, fresh, but it turned like this, like lime green color and actually got pretty juicy. So it still smelled good. I really like this smell, but anyway, um, she had an old bar of Jammy Time, a flat bottom bar. And this actually I felt like didn't have as much scent as it normally does. Ooh, ooh. I can see this poor date. 2017. 8, 20, 1, 2017, I think is what it says. Um, that's a really old bar. No wonder it felt like it wasn't as strong. But yeah, that was really, really good. So. This bar is the same age as Maya that you saw at the beginning of the video, and it still did good. Current scent of the month is Meet Me at the Mistletoe. I have the scent notes pulled up, but my computer has long since went to sleep. I'm not going to log back in and stuff. I have heard people say this is a tree scent for people who don't like tree scents. So I didn't want to get the whole kit, but I wanted to try it. It's okay. I will agree with that statement because this would be a tree scent. If I was gonna warm, I would go for this. And technically, I don't know if it has, like, like it's got mistletoe, obviously. I think it might have spruce in it. Um, if this is around next year, I would purchase one to have warming like at a couple days around my Christmas tree, but it doesn't really excite me. Um, but I have it going in my bathroom right now and it's a decent performer. Um, a couple more greasy bars from Maddie. Love story. It's funny. These last two, I remember why I gave them to her. It's because I couldn't smell. These are two scents I can't smell. And that's love story. This was a bring back my bar flat bottom. Look at how greasy that was. Some of these red waxes or darker ones just don't hold up well. And French kiss. I cannot smell this. I think the people say that maybe this one was like Victoria's Secret love spell. And this one was... Uh, what is it? Brown Sugar and Fig from Bath and Body Works, which are actually owned by the same company. Neither one of them, though, do anything for me. But 
but Maddie can smell them really well. And a lot of people can. Okay. So let's talk about testers. I got through quite a bit of testers. Um, both I, I have a mason jar in my bathroom and then I put out a mason jar in my kitchen by my mini warmers to try to use up more with all bakery in those ones. So I've been getting through them. Um, first one here is satin sheets. This is not around anymore. I don't know. It's not. I used to love this scent. It's like, what is it? Sandalwood and vanilla or something. I used to really love it. But, and it was in my club for a while, but I've outgrown it. All right. I mean, not outgrown it, but I've just, yes, gotten kind of tired of it. So it's just okay. Hi, Maya. I'm almost done. Um, The next one, Winterberry Apple Tea. I did this in my bathroom. This is a great scent. It's a great performer. Um, and kind of a scentsy staple. I'm pretty sure we'll see that again. Um, pomegranate Prosecco. This was around a couple seasons ago. I think it stuck around for two seasons. And it's nice. It's a nice, sweet pomegranate scent. Um, it was a good one to warm for New Year's with that Prosecco. But it was okay. I'm not sad to see it go, really. Ice Pine. Just another pine, generic pine scent, in my opinion. Sugar Cookie. Did this in my kitchen. Um, sugar cookie. I just feel like I get kind of like a Play-Doh type scent from this. So I like vanilla bean buttercream better than sugar cookie. You can still get that in the brick through Scentsy Club, but it's surprisingly not in the catalog anymore. Harvest Blessings. I love this one. It didn't come back this season, but it's like a pumpkin apple a little bit of spice. It's a spice I can get behind. It reminds me a lot of a Yankee candle that I have called like, apple pine, pumpkin or pumpkin apple. That was a really good one. It'd be great if it showed up in clearance. Vanilla mint, speaking of vanilla mint, and this was one, it was a white wax with a green clamshell. Just so clean and good. I love it. Um, Homestead Holiday, I did not like this. This is way too cinnamon spice forward for me. Mm -mm. A lot of people like it. I don't. And I don't think it's around anymore. Baked Apple Pie. Yeah, I didn't like that one either. Too much cinnamon. Vanilla Bean Buttercream. This is just a staple. Mm, it's just decadent vanilla, you know, bakery perfection. Great on its own. Great mixer. Polar Bear Hog. That's the one that um, Eskimo Kiss is called now with the blackberry jam and all that. Really good. Butter Pecan. Um, I actually didn't mind this. I didn't think I would like it because I usually don't like scents with nut scents in them. But it was, you know, it was okay for a bakery. It was a good ba ba background bakery scent. Um, Blue Sage and Tonka. I don't like this one. I get like a... alcohol rubbing alcohol type scent like a cheap men's perfume and I had this in a fragrance flower and I had the same thing happen yeah it's like rubbing alcohol um I don't like it I don't think it came back this season uh blueberry cheesecake I did this last night when my husband was gone in a mini warmer in our kitchen because this is the one scent that he I warmed it once full bar in my office and I haven't purchase it since then he actually had like almost a physical reaction it was just like almost made him sick it was so like sweet and then like that there is kind of an off-putting dairy scent I guess from the cheesecake so I just used that up but I wouldn't repurchase it again um I don't love it and there's a lot of scents I'll still warm you know he doesn't like them like anything bakery but I will give him some some grace on that. Um, okay, this was interesting. I'm really glad I had this old party tester of frosted ginger cookie because this is in the current Bring Back My Bar. I'm hearing really good things about it. I didn't like it. I don't know if it's because this was old and, you know, again, I don't know how it was stored before I got it, but I don't get any cookie bakery. I just get ginger, ginger root, like you bought a ginger root at the store and peeled it and sniffed it. Yeah. Um, I do hear people saying that, yes, it is fresh ginger, but they're getting a bakery. But for me in this experience, I did not. 
And so that's good for me in a way because I don't think I'm going to purchase it and I can put that money towards something else, a Scentsy related. Um, cinnamon vanilla. I mean, mm, didn't really like it with the cinnamon. And then I don't even know how you say this. Dolce Delish. <laughs> This is an old one. I don't know. This was just kind of, I think, like a... That was a weird one. Bakery, but it was weird. Yeah. And then lastly, um, I have some testers here of... What I did was I took a whole bunch of, like, the cinnamon spice ones that I didn't like, and I threw them all in my warmer in my garage, and they've been going for... This is probably week two now. Um, and I can still smell them, and I can't believe I fit all of these together in one full size warmer it was the it's the Winnie the Pooh honey pot warmer so I'm not going to sniff these because I don't like any of them and together it was horrible to my nose but at least I didn't waste the wax you know and um yeah my husband didn't say anything about it so clove and cinnamon cinnamon bear Christmas cottage autumn sunset Spiced Ember Glow and Apple and Cinnamon Sticks. So mix them all together, throw them in there, and at least it, they got used that way. So that is all of my Scentsy um, that I got through. All my empties. Um, if that's what you were here for exclusively, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Let me know what scents you guys are warming as we round up the year and are you still in your winter heavy scents or are you kind of getting ready? I think I'm kind of getting ready to go more fresh into January. So love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk briefly about a couple books that I got through. My last video, Empties video, I talked about the Hunger Games series that I had read the three books from and asked for input um, if you guys wanted me to talk about that stuff. And most people, everyone who replied said yes, but I did um, have some feedback that I should put it at the end of the video, which I agree with because that's not really what this channel is. This is not book talk or booktube or whatever. You know, this is video is like part of the wax community. Um, but people were pretty receptive to it. So I'm going to start talking about these when I have them in the end of empty videos. I might not always have a book at the end, you know, of my empties. Um, and I'll try to put the, so someone suggested that I put the title in the um, title of the book in the title of the video. I think that's a great idea. Um, but right now I didn't, I don't know that I'll do that for this video because I have two books and it would be a really long title. So I'm going to put it in the description. I was kind of thinking what could I, what title could I use for this video? Um, I came up with three ideas and they're kind of cheesy. <laughs> um, I'll probably name it one of them or none of them before I post this, but let me know what you guys think. I thought first I thought um, this one I'm not going to do, but um, bars and books, but I'm like, no, that's too close to bars and bricks with Brandy. And I, I couldn't do that. Um, so then I thought, um, scents and stories. And then the other thought I had was empties and endings. But I don't know about that one because it, I'm not necessarily going to give away the ending and spoiler alerts in these. I don't even really know what this is going to look like. Just a very high level, would I recommend it, would I read it again kind of thing. Okay. Um, so we'll see what the title ends up being of this video. But the first book that I read, this was for my book club. I don't know if I told you guys, I joined a book club um, at the local branch of our public library, which is just in our school here. Um, and I went to the first meeting and it was so fun. And now I'm reading the second book this month. But the first book that we read that when I was there is called The Art of Racing in the Rain. Um, and this is by Garth Stein. And this is a really good book. I think a lot of people have heard of this if not read it or seen the movie. This book came out in 2008 or 2009 and um, it was pretty popular and they did make a movie of it. So you've probably heard of it. I was going to look here and see what year it came out. 2008. So the year I met my husband. Um, 
this is when I think that's the year I met him. Um, it's a year I moved to the area where I met him. And um, this book came out then. I've been wanting to read it for a long time, um, at least since probably 2012. But I haven't because, um, I don't know, I just haven't had a chance to. That's why I haven't watched the movie either. I always want to read the book before I watch the movie. And then I end up not watching the movie because I don't read the book. But this is really good. I highly recommend it. So as you can see, there's a picture of a dog here on the cover. And this book is told from the perspective of the dog. So um, it's kind of unusual that you have a book narrated by a dog and like first person from the dog's perspective, but it was really neat. I really enjoyed it. Um, so this dog, he is kind of like a philosopher type dog, I guess. Um, he thinks of himself as very smart and um, well-rounded, and he is. And um, kind of the backstory on that that makes it believable is he, um, spends a lot of his days in front of the TV when his owners are gone. And they tell him, don't watch TV all day, but he can't help it. And so he does. And so he gains a lot of knowledge that way. And he has an owner, um, named Dean, who's a race car driver. Um, not professionally for most of the book. Um, and then Dean gets a wife and they have a kid and stuff. And then, um, life happens and there's, some pretty dark stuff that happens in this book that I wasn't expecting. Um, but I guess that, you know, that's life and there's, there's evil in this world. And, um, yeah, so the dog kind of, um, talks about his experience going through that with stuff with, um, the people in his life. And, He's so loyal to his owner and he just thinks the world of his owner. And like I said, he's, he's very, um, philosophical and I don't know, it was just, it was really cool. And it kind of like, to me is one of those books that I have been thinking about it after I read it. Um, just like the perspective of it and really interesting. And it does make you think a little bit, you know, about your own animals and, I feel like animals are really intelligent and we don't always give them the credit that they deserve for that. Um, so it was a really good book. I would recommend it. Like I said, there's some dark stuff in here. Um, I don't think it, it's not a kid's book just cause it has an animal on it. It's not a kid's book, but, um, yeah, it was really good. I would recommend it. I haven't watched the movie yet, but now I'm going to have to watch the movie and compare it and really good book. Okay, so the next book I read was, um, I actually cheated a little bit because um, I had to hurry up and get through it so I could start my next book club book. So I had the a hardback paper copy that my friend lent me, which I've already given back to her. I also checked out from the library the audio discs. And this is, so that's what I have here to show you. This is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, by Suzanne Collins, and it is the prequel to The Hunger Games. So I'm late to the game on The Hunger Games, and when I started reading them um, a month or two ago, I didn't know that there was a prequel out and that the prequel was actually like in theaters or coming to theaters. So they did adapt it to a movie as well. But this is a really good story. I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad I read it when I did. Um, I would say read The Hunger Games first and then read this, um, even though it takes place before. It's kind of, you know, supposed to be read after. Um, so it takes place, I'll try not to give too many spoilers, but um, it takes place 65 years, I think, before The Hunger Games. Um, that is in, you know, the Katniss Hunger Games. And Hunger Games have been going on for 10 years at this point when this book starts. And we have, um, I always want to call him Cornelius, but that's not his name. It's Coralanus, I think is how you say it. Coralanus Snow, who, as you probably know, is the kind of evil dictator of the capital. Well, and of the um, districts of Panem. 
in the Hunger Games. So this is when he is young. He's 18, I think. He's just finishing um, high school. I think they call it the academy. But um, And so basically they're trying to, the district, uh, the capital is trying to bring more interest to the Hunger Games because at this point it's very basic and um, not as glamorous, you know, and a lot of people don't watch it because obviously, you know, it's pretty gruesome. And so they have um, the, like, I guess, high school seniors at the academy um, of the Capitol School basically be the mentors. This is the first year that the tributes have had mentors. And as you know, in Hunger Games, they don't have mentors that are um, kids. They're former victors, but um, they tried that out this year. And so this goes through S Snow. Um, he has his um, tribute and he ends up with a tribute from District 12, which is the same district that Katniss is from. And it's a girl and um, it was really, it was really good. So there's a lot of nods to the Hunger Game and references to the Hunger Game. There's a character from, there's one other character besides Snow who is in the original trilogy in the third book who is a character in this book. And so I'm not going to give it away. It took me way too long in the book to figure it out though. <laughs> it felt kind of silly. Like why didn't that dawn on me that that's the same character? Um, but if you know, you know. And so it was really interesting. Um, the Hunger Games books are first person perspective told from Katniss's first person perspective where this is a third person perspective, but it is a story of snow. I actually liked that um, because snow is not a good person. So I didn't, you know, you still get in his mind and realize what he's thinking and stuff, but it, I felt like, you know, you don't want to sympathize with him, but you kind of see his progression. I mean, he's always really like self-centered and a bit of a narcissist. Um, but you kind of see that progress throughout the story and throughout the situations that he's put in, um, and kind of understand how he got to be where he was 65 years later when the Hunger Games occurred. And I think part of it, Part of his hate for Katniss is probably related to his experience with his tribute from District 12 and the similarities between those characters probably really bothered him, um, which, I mean, he put that on himself, but um, it was good. It was really good. I felt like the ending was a little bit rushed. Parts of the book, I overall, it was a slower paced book for me than The Hunger Games, although it wasn't like a slow read, but it, it wasn't as fast paced. But at the end, it just felt really rushed to me. And he went from, you know, being a bad dude, but whatever, to like being like a really bad dude, um, just like that. And so I felt like that was a little bit rushed. Um... But I really, I really enjoyed it. I liked, like I said, there were several like nods to the Hunger Game, just kind of built up that world. Um, and I'm glad I read it freshly after reading the Hunger Games because I have a really bad memory. And I don't know that I would have caught a lot of those references. Um, like there's a song that they sing in the Hunger Games. It's like the Hangman song or something. And that comes back, uh, you kind of hear a little bit more about the origins of it in this um, book. And it was really good. I'm going to watch the movie probably when it comes out, um, streaming or whatever, um, and compare them. And I'm guessing the movie won't be as good as the books, the mo um, just like the, the Hunger Games series. Um, and books are usually always better. But yes, I would recommend this. And um, on the caveat that you should probably read the Hunger Games first. You know, it's kind of a big commitment to read the three books but it's pretty easy read they are young adult books I will say I don't know if this is considered a young adult genre um some of the themes and stuff in it seemed a little bit more 
mature and dark than you would see like in a YA book. But um, yeah, it was really good. And I, I liked that world building that happened in there. And it made me like want more Hunger Game material content. I would love to see um, some backstory on the dark days. I would love to see how Panem came to be. Um, all of that stuff that, because like this, like I said, it takes place when the capital has already had control of the districts. There's the 12 districts, all of that. Um, I'd like to see even further back a little bit more backstory on how that all happened. And there's so much to the storyline. I feel like Suzanne Collins could build on it more and have offshoots and, you know, different stories like that. Um, I really enjoyed it. I, I think I've it's probably said that multiple times already, so I will stop saying that. But yeah, I would recommend it. Um, I would recommend reading it. Um, I went back to like 2008 in my um, audiobooks here. I had to dig out a disc man and stuff and um, not the most efficient way to do it, but it was still good. I actually, I had listened to a little bit of the audio of the one of the Hunger Games books and I liked this um, audio commentary better. Um, the lady that read the first ones had a British accent, which is fine, but I, I mean, the book doesn't take place in Britain. So I liked this um, audio version better. Um, what's the guy, does it say on here? San, Santonio Fontana. And he did a great job with it. So this is a book that's good enough, in my opinion, that I, even though I've read it, I would reread it in the future and I would purchase it for my library, my book collection, because it's that good. So that is my thoughts on those books. Um, I would read both of these again. I don't know which one I like better because they're both so different, but they're both really good. I'm currently reading, um, stay tuned for my next video where I have a book I've read. Uh, it's a nonfiction book and I usually don't read nonfiction. Um, I thought I didn't really like it, but this book is really good. And so um, it's fun to be opened to new genres and experiences that you normally wouldn't do. And that's kind of what this book club has, has made me read this book that I normally wouldn't read. So yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts if you've read either of those. Um, if you've seen the movie, how it compares, I guess either of them. And if you're still here, thanks. Thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Merry Christmas and happy holidays and a happy new year. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.